into the trusty Innova. I'm back now in Manila. We just finished our trip from Singapore, so make sure you check out that vlog. But for now, we're going to be picking up the Camaro at Garage 2233, and then we're gonna get some updates also with what's happening with our air-cooled cars. After that, we're gonna be driving the Camaro down to Second Skin so that we can finally pick up the Carpathian Defender and see if it is a good contender or a replacement for the Ford F-150 Raptor. So let's see if my decision is right because the plan was either to get a G63 or this V8 Carpathian Defender. Now, I wanted something that rode a little softer because the G63 still runs on suspension coils rather on air suspension. Unlike the Carpathian V8 Defender, it is running on air springs. So, hoping my decision is correct, based on some of the YouTube reviews that I've seen, the car is not as fast as the G63, but it should be much more comfortable. The Camaro is blocked behind some cars, so they get to move some cars. I'm gonna go to the other side to update with the other cars first. So this is what happened, we're basically scored the cam lobes and look at the rockers, the rockers just basically burnt out. So glad the pistons look fine, the piston sleeves look fine, the valves look fine. Everything else looks okay except for those bits so we're gonna have to buy another overhauling kit so that we can reassemble this motor. Anyway, for the 993 Turbo, we have all these zinc components. Look how beautiful they are. Nice and new looking. Fredo giving me the lowdown on the damage. Yeah, on our cam. Uh -huh. Well, there's some stuff, some gaskets that we can use from the 993 Turbo that weren't used. I see the yellow car is being worked on. Finally, the electrician is looking at this car. I'm so excited to get this car running so that we can give it back to the client. Some of the other cars here are the Targa. We're not gonna update with that because we have to move with the Camaro out. Just wanted to check the damage on the engine and check the progress of the 993 Turbo. Okay guys, running out so that we can get the Camaro to second skin. So we just left Garage 2233. I'm so sad to see the engine of Noah disassembled again. But as I was saying, this is one of the issues when you have multiple hands touching the car. It's a bit hard to figure out what went wrong, who did something wrong. And right now it's not about blaming anyone, but more of like, what do we need to get the car back on the road? But for now, we're gonna enjoy the drive in the Camaro. This is why it's not nice to have a fast car in the Philippines. It is always traffic. So we decided to get the Camaro wrapped because the paint is so pristine and I don't want to scratch it. Although it does have some scratches on the lower panel already, you can't really visibly see it that much. So before anything else gets chipped, we want to make sure to protect the car by sending it to Second Skin. Second Skin essentially wraps everything in a paint protection film. I was asking Archie if we should mat the car out and he was saying he likes to keep it gloss. So we are going to keep it gloss. We will be in second skin in 3, 2, 1. We have arrived here in second skin and look, a Ferrari SF90. How oh, wow, 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 wow. Okay, let us look at this car. Morning. I like that car. Yeah, me too. <laughs> We're also bringing all the Techno Monster bags to Second Skin. Look how badly damaged this bag. I've yeah. been traveling with this bag for about two years now and I don't put the cover on anymore and as you can see it's really really effed up. But the team here is going to miraculously make this look good. <laughs> they do have the other bags which we're going to be yeah. bringing home. And our Spec Miata is also parked here. It's going to be picked up on Tuesday. So tomorrow, we'll yeah. pick this up, leaving that car and bringing home the other car. Too many cars. Here's an interesting picture. This is the Defender Carpathian V8 Edition. This is 
an older G63 AMG and as you can see the differences and the similarities of the boxy design and yeah this one looks a little skinnier than this one but from the outside the Carpathian Defender doesn't look any more special than the other Defenders. What we've done basically is to mat out everything else so that it matches the rest of the car. Eventually we will be changing a lot of things on this car but for now we're just gonna enjoy it and yeah. Oh wow, so here are the bags that Second Skin has finished and as you can see there's some cut lines but nice and protected salvaged as much as we can there are still some scratches I'm giving them such a headache repairing these bags but look how good they are, you know let's, let's steal a shot Richard, I hope you don't mind Look. Okay, beautiful bag. So it matches with the carbon. I got this super cheap tire cover from eBay just to make sure that the rear spare tire doesn't burn and it kind of matches the rest of the car. I'm not going to wrap this anymore because I don't really care if that gets chipped or not. But the plates are on and looks like we're ready to go. Yeah, we're ready. Thank you. Yeah. No gas, I bet. First things first, for any V8 supercharged monster, we got to fill up some gas. Check out this really cool interior Alcantara steering wheel and a full-time video feed on the rear view mirror. It's not a rear view mirror per se, it's actually a rear view LCD. Car is asking for a software update already. At 61 liters, we had about one fourth in the tank already. So that means we're probably at a 60 or 70 liter range. The Defender comes with an activity key, which is basically a watch, which will allow me to start and stop the car. We're gonna charge that back in the condo. Uh, yep, start the car. Air pressure set for light loading. The car only has 12 kilometers at this moment, so we're going to baby it and not feel the superchargedness of it just yet. I actually don't know how to go about touching any of the update now. This touch screen is very nice because it has this curved display. Graphics look really good and we're off. Okay, we're finally rolling home and I haven't really put any mileage on the car. It's been one kilometer since we left the shop. Now, in comparing the car to the Ford Raptor, I don't think it's a very, very fair comparison. Granted that this is almost three times the price of the Ford Raptor. So, in terms of that comparison, not fair. Also, the Ford Raptor has beautiful long travel suspension. This has air springs, so two completely different worlds. The ride, I would say, is a little soft. Not as soft as the full-size Range Rover, but you can expect a little more firmness from the performance models of the Defender, especially because we do have a V8 supercharged engine in front. Again, the reason I got this car was because of the engine, and it is a dying breed in that sense, because the engines nowadays are going to be less and less of a big cubic displacement and more and more of an electric vehicle. So some of the local Defender units that I was looking at were actually V6 uh, electric, mild electric hybrid vehicles, which I actually didn't like. Some of them were also diesel, which I also didn't like. I wanted to get the gas variant because it is much faster and it's just a much smoother experience when you're driving the car. Check this out, this is the watch that comes with the car and you can basically unlock and lock the car and it activates the car. Nice little Defender logo over here. And then lock. Okay, first order of business is to go get an S-Lex and N-Lex RFID. 
After that, we're gonna drop by again, Garage 2233. We're trying to pick up some parts for the Radical. I don't know if it's there or I'm gonna make a phone call to Enrique and find out where my parts went. I love the guys here at Shell Magallanes. They're super helpful. They're actually working out my RFID for me so that I don't need to stay outside. It's super hot and humid and sticky today. But I just found out from Enrique that the parts for the Radical are in Garage 2233. So we're gonna make a quick swing there and grab all the stuff and then we're probably going to end the vlog. I'm chatting with Keith now regards to the modifications of the Defender. We need to finalize everything so that he can place the order for me already. Also, according to Keith, most of the Land Rover Defender clients that he has, they normally end up buying a kit before even the Land Rover arrives because they do find the outside just a little soft. Okay, apparently the radical parts are not here, but we can look at the exterior of the Defender. So Archie and the team at Second Skin ended up doing the matte wrap for the hood along with some of the pieces on the roof. I don't like how this is plastic. I wish it was aluminum at least, but that doesn't make sense. I don't even know if you can step on it. It's not functional, it seems like it's going down. We are gonna be replacing that also with a carbon hood. So that's gonna go. 22 inch tires underneath it is the big brake kit. We're gonna end up recycling the tires but changing the mags. Um, the front fender feels like it is composite. It doesn't feel like it is aluminum. The doors are apparently metal. The rear panel I think is also composite. I wish I went a little darker with the tint. You can still, still sort of see inside the truck. And yes, the exhaust is way too quiet. Definitely this has to go. Now we do have a retractable tow hook which basically pops out. And that's the only cool feature about the rear. Have the rear view camera down there. And then we have the full-time camera up there. Based off the tachometer, it seems the red line is 6,750. I will not yet get to experience that. We're going to try to put about 1,600 kilometers on this before we actually give it the full beans. So it's going to be a while because amongst shuffling along with the supercars, we now have to break this baby in. Also, it's probably going to take me a month or more than a month or so. I don't have much travel plans with this car, but we do use a SUV when we are going out of town, especially in places that I don't know where we're headed and we can't bring a supercar, especially also if we're bringing a lot of things. So far, it seems very easy to drive. The seats are very comfortable. I will raise it up just a little. It does have a start and stop feature, which I don't know how to turn off just yet. I'm going to have to learn all the controls in the infotainment system along with the cluster. But for now, I'm giving you my first impressions of the car. From the outside, the car looks like it belongs in a Bond villain movie because we have seen this in a Bond villain movie. Now, it's kind of weird that you're looking at the rear view mirror, but it's really a rear view LCD screen. And I can only see the top of the car that's right behind me, although he is right up at the tail of the car. So um, Apple CarPlay works seamlessly. It looks like the graphics is super beautiful. When we park the car, it turns off and I actually can't tell that it's starting again, especially right now when I'm off the brake. It has a hold feature, which is basically keeps the car parked until I tap on the gas. And then there, it starts right up. I do like that the steering wheel audio volume is actually a rotating wheel, which means I can quickly turn up the volume and quickly turn down the volume. Cabin wise, it's super quiet. I don't know if there is an exhaust knob somewhere here for me to be able to program the exhaust to be louder, but from the inside of the cabin, I cannot hear anything. I think that's one of the major complaints of this special edition V8 Defender. It's a great thing that Keith and the company that we're talking to has an exhaust for this. I have asked for a video and it sounds so good. It's definitely going to add a lot of character to the car. Ride comfort, I won't say it's the softest in the market, but then again, you have the powerful engine, which means we do need a little firmness in the suspension. We're probably going to end the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed the short content and when I have a better chance, I'll do a more proper in-depth review of the Defender Carpathian V8 Edition. We're gonna do some off-roading also because that's what this car is for or that's what this truck is for. 
And yes, so if you guys want to learn any more information, please leave me a comment down below. If not, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Peace out.